Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about five emerging college majors that will dominate by 2035. You guys are always asking me, what are some college majors that are on the horizon? What are some college majors that have upward trajectory? What are college majors that have projected growth rates in the next five to 10 years? And today, we're going to be discussing just that. But before we get into this video, please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel. I'm an up and coming channel. Let's continue growing. And maybe there might be a little giveaway at the end of this video. Keep watching. Before we jump into the topic, I just want to quickly say thank you guys so much for 1,000 subscribers. I literally started this channel this year, so it's so exciting to see how much I've grown in the last three months. But anyways, let me stop yapping. Let's get into the topic. When we think about 15 years ago from today, no one thought that in 2015, data science or even becoming a social media manager was going to be a profitable or lucrative career choice. But now we see jobs like this show up on LinkedIn every single day. Every single day, there's social media manager, there's data scientists, data analyst roles that come on Indeed, LinkedIn, and all kinds of job search engines. So today we're going to be talking about five emerging college majors that could be huge by the year 2035. Listen, you guys, between the Amazon layoffs that happened last Tuesday, Amazon laid off nearly 10% of their entire workforce. 30,000 people lost their jobs last Tuesday. That being said, you guys are always asking me for what are some career choices that are recession proof, job proof to be on the lookout for, especially for someone who's still in high school or someone who is about to start college. What should you think about for majors? For anyone who is interested in booking a free 15 minute call with me, any of you guys can book a call with me. There are typically video calls and we talk about whatever you want to bring to the conversation. If you're talking about internships, college majors, your college applications, the list of schools you're applying to, what you should major in, how to apply for scholarships, how to find scholarships, how to finance your education, all of the above. Those are all topics that I cover over on my top mate. So if you want to book a free 15 minute call with me, please do so down below. So today I'm essentially going to be going over college majors, internship and experience opportunities to be on the lookout for, and the specific career type I see emerging in the next five to 10 years. From Fortune 100 companies divesting away from DEI initiatives and, and investing into AI and automation, now is more important than ever to think really critically about what major you choose, especially with how expensive education is. And the price of college is not going down anytime soon. So yes. Let's be very critical and decisive when we make this decision. So coming in at number five, we have quantum computing specialists. What is quantum computing? Well, essentially, quantum computing is high computer process. Someone who builds computers that operate at an atomic level, which is exponentially faster than what we're seeing in today's processors. Someone who is a quantum computing specialist solves all types of problems for employers in our future marketplace. For example, cryptography. If this sounds like an interesting field to you, some college majors you can consider include physics and applied mathematics. Both physics and applied mathematics prepare you for a career and quantum computing. And therefore, if you pick up these majors, they will definitely prepare you and start you off at a great career in this field. You can also grow upon your experience by attaining internships and experiences from all different kinds of labs like the National Lab, IBM, Google Quantum, and even startups. So the next major we're going to be going over is number four, and that is going to be a personalized medicine specialist. What does a career in personalized medicine look like? And what kinds of majors open up the door for a career in this field? Essentially, personalized medicine is using genetic data as well as AI to create customized treatment plans. As we know it today, right? When someone gets sick, when someone isn't feeling well, when someone goes to healthcare specialist or a medical provider, essentially, they are diagnosed if they meet, you know, let's say X out of 10 or X out of five symptoms that fall within a certain illness, right? And once you get diagnosed with that specific illness, you're essentially then prescribed medication for that. Now, when it comes to mental health and things of that nature, there's typically a little bit more of like, you know, trial and error that happens to finding a right medication plan that works well for you. But essentially, the idea of personalized medicine is humans will be leveraging AI as well as data and human genomes to find a medication or treatment plan that best aligns with your like genetic makeup, right? So it would take data information from like yourself, your family, your parents to essentially consider like what kinds of proteins do you have in your DNA? How can we give someone a treatment plan? How can 
a specialist provider give an individual a treatment plan that fits within their DNA structure, right? Something that won't disrupt their system. That's essentially the purpose of personalized medication. Now, what kinds of problems does someone in this field solve? Well, it's no secret that there's been a growing public interest in personalized care as well as a public interest in things like IVF and things like CRISPR, as well as there's been a huge conversation about the need for a reform to the American healthcare system. So essentially, if you think about it, this is solving multiple problems, right? A career as a personalized medication specialist solves multiple problems in the market. It's solving the issue of the current healthcare system in the United States that is commonly talked about and discussed and debated. It is solving the issue of individuals going on specific treatment plans that end up giving them uh, even more negative symptoms or medical implications. And it's also solving the third issue of like all that time that's essentially being wasted, right? Between trying different treatment plans and prescriptions to find one that works well for you. Furthermore, it's literally leveraging data that already exists, right? So much data can be taken from someone with just a simple urine test, a blood test. There's been a huge dissatisfaction to the one size fits all approach to the current medication system and healthcare system. So I personally believe that a career in personalized medication is the most likely to boom in the next five to 10 years, in my personal opinion. Even the National Institute of Health called personalized medication, the future of healthcare. AI can now process human geomes much faster than ever before, which means the demand for human interpreters is going to skyrocket. So some great majors for someone who's interested in this career track is molecular biology, genetics, biochemistry, and and bioinformatics. Bioinformatics is low-key a new and -and up-and-coming major. Not a lot of colleges and universities have this as a major, but if you are interested in this space, I would definitely recommend having a double major in biology and information systems or major and minoring in one of the two. In my opinion, I would say major in information systems, minor in biology. The third major on this list is a climate change mitigation specialist. Now, what is someone who works in this space? Well, essentially, someone who designs policies, technologies, and infrastructure to reduce carbon emission and protect ecosystems. What are some good majors for someone Who is interested in this field? Well, for one, obviously, environmental engineering is up and coming. It's a new kind of career track, major track that I've been seeing from private institutions as well as some public four-year state universities. Environmental policy, I don't know if this one is as strong, but it's still good to consider, as well as sustainability studies. Again, another major that I wouldn't say is the strongest, but it is on the horizon. Out of all of these majors, I would definitely believe that a degree in environmental engineering or environmental policy would be the strongest lead to have a successful career in this field, along with, of course, of course, of course, of course, internships, experience, research experience, lab experience. All these types of experience can really help prepare you for a career in this new up and coming emerging market. Why is it rising? What's the statistics to back this statement up? Well, the World Economic Forum estimates that the green economy can generate up to 40 million new jobs by 2030 alone. That's only five years from now. And I mean, we're almost at the end of 2025. So essentially four years from now, if you look at all these major companies and Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies, you'll notice that a lot of them have a ESG, Environment, Social and Governance Organization goals or objectives or missions that are listed on their websites. Furthermore, if Fortune 100 companies are investing in this space, you can almost guarantee that there'll be jobs to fill these roles. I also think someone who's interested in a space like this, I think they should definitely, definitely consider grad school. A lot of the times with like these kind of like environmental science or like sociology types of like bachelor's degree, typically a lot of the more rigorous training on like data mining, data wrangling happen at the graduate level. So chances are you might need to consider grad school if you're interested in this field. But nonetheless, I mean, you have until now in 2030. So might as well go to school while we wait. (laughs) Okay, number two on this list is cybersecurity. Y'all already know I talk about cybersecurity all the time, right? I am a huge, huge advocate of cybersecurity. First of all, what is cybersecurity? What is that field? Well, essentially, cybersecurity detects and prevents cyber attacks. Cybersecurity analyst protects everything from hospitals to governments to schools to homes to home network security systems, everything in that field, everything in that range, and much, much more. What are some majors you can consider studying? Well, for one, the obvious, a major in cybersecurity. Again, this is still kind of new to a lot of 
universities and institutions, but I'm noticing a lot of state schools are starting to provide cybersecurity as a popular major. So we have cybersecurity, we have computer science, which I'm not going to echo as much. I think the big boom of the computer science, computer engineering boom already kind of happened in the late 2010s and the early 2020s. I honestly feel like as we move closer to 2030s, I think we will probably see a dip in the computer science major as a whole, not because it's a bad major, but I mean, people have been saying it for a year. There definitely is a level of oversaturation. And I think specializing at this point makes a lot more sense than just attaining a entry level degree in computer science, especially in a world where, you know, fame companies, Amazon, like we just mentioned, had 30,000 employees laid off literally last week, a lot of whom were developers and engineers. If you're looking for specific internships or specific certificates, if you're interested in a career in cybersecurity, Please listen. For one, internships in IT department, the Department of Defense for the United States government, federal agencies, as well as cybersecurity firms like IBM. Um, there's also a bunch of like cybersecurity startups that are all in the Bay Area. So you should definitely do your research on that. There's network security companies. There's infrastructure operations security companies. So there's all kinds of careers within cybersecurity. I just want to reiterate one more time. There is information security cybersecurity and infrastructure security. So all three of those fields are, I guess, like smaller fields within cybersecurity as a whole and a good way, again, to specialize or attain certain certificates if you want an opportunity to meet the needs of this new and emerging market. Just to call out some quick statistics, the BLS projects a 32% growth in information security roles by 20. 33, which is much, much higher than the average. I'm pretty sure the average on the website is like anywhere between like five to 8%. So the fact that this is 33% projected growth is incredibly high. Furthermore, AI tools are making cybercrime much easier. So things like ethical hacking, AI hacking to support firms that are investing in their red team, their blue team, their purple team um, defenses and things of that nature are also really good things to Google and look up and do your research on. Anyways, you guys, I guess that's all I have for you today. Sorry if I numbered this video wrong. I'm a little bit tired. I'm recording this after work. Anyways, it's been a long week. I moved to my new apartment. So if you notice that the background looks a little different, that's why I'm currently living in New York City. So I'm so excited to be here. I really hope that I'm able to like partner with like education firms and brands and again bring more awareness and tools to the youth to uh, essentially helping you guys make decisions that are empowering you and your futures right I want everyone to make well and informed decisions when they are committing themselves to a college major which is why I make videos like this if you like this types of videos please like I said like and subscribe for more if this video gets to 50 likes I will be giving away one free one hour strategy call with me on my top mate. If you want to apply to the giveaway, please leave a comment down below. Comment down below, like this video and subscribe to my channel as well as give a follow to my Instagram. I'm constantly sharing resources and links and opportunities that I know about. As you guys know, I work in big tech. So anytime I hear about opportunities, I am so quick to amplify that because I want you guys to, you know, find your first jobs, find your first opportunities, whatever. I know what it's like to be young and to not have an experience. So I always want to look out for you guys. Anyways, again, sorry for yapping. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and sorry for misnumbering the video. In the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Bye.